Welcome to Rock, Paper, Hang Grenades. I am Representative Gary Harper. You know, my shirt looks white in that thing. Doesn't kind it? Does. It, it does, does look white. Yeah, wearing white on camera is so great. Dangerous. No, I know I look so great. Of course I look great. Everything just blends. But I have a blue shirt and it looks white. We look like we're part of the logo, don't we? We do. We do look like part of it. What's your name again? Eric. Yeah, Eric know, Eastman. It's, it's right up on the The wall. Honorable Eric Eastman, even. Hard, even hard Eric Eastman. Well, Honorable, That's uh, we can debate that later. Yeah. <laughs> We shall that, see. Yeah, that it's good will, to be back. That remains to be seen, yes, yes. I understand you had a fantastic guest host last oh, week. Oh, yes, Victoria Sullivan. Yeah. She was absolutely delightful. Doesn't get better. She is a, such a nice lady. Yeah. Well-informed, well-read, a great, a great representative. Yeah, the people of Manchester are very fortunate. They certainly are. You know, it's not like the poor people of Weir who get stuck with me. Yeah. Oh, Gosh. No, I've heard stories. Oh, yeah. You know. It is pretty bad. Sometimes I feel bad for him, and then I run for office again anyway. That'll you know? show him. Yeah. yeah. And you get elected. And I get elected, which is weird. Anyway. So we have a wonderful guest today. We have a wonderful guest. We have Her uh, the Honorable Harriet Katie. I forgot how long, uh, Harriet Katie, I forgot how long ago you were in the State House with me. 2002 through 2006. Okay. Uh -huh. so, so 2002, I got booted out in 2004 and then got back in seven so for your first term I was there and then for the next two and then you went one more no I left after the six to take a job as a town administrator oh was, you wanted money <laughs> well <laughs> if you serve in this legislature you need money <laughs> yes you do <laughs> and then we have uh, Glenn uh, Olette who is the uh, people's mayor of Manchester as he's called by who by who by who? who calls you that uh, not by me the people the people right oh so Glenn wanted to come on for a brief moment to talk about something, and I have no clue what it is, but we're going to let him stick around because we're talking about, I assumed you wanted to talk about, Harriet, that you wanted to talk about uh, right to know and, and stuff, so. Legislative actions this last year. Yeah, yes. okay, yeah, okay. So anyway, uh, Glenn, take it away with what, whatever you're doing. I'm probably going to regret this. I'm going to find out afterwards that it was no, something I want. totally didn't want. Non-political. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah. Citizens Committee on Economic Development is going to be celebrating the city's 172nd birthday. Hold it away from your face. Over to your, to your left. Your other left. There you go. <laughs> your other left. There he's you go. go. I'm French. Up. And, he's and it's going to be out. at City Hall Plaza, but because of the incoming storm on Friday with severe lightning and thunder and heavy rains, we are bringing it upstairs to the Board of Mayor and Alderman Chambers the automatic chambers and so you're all welcome it's from 6 30 to 10 p.m. and yes we will still have fireworks Ooh. they'll be on film but we will have fireworks no, inside the building well, I didn't want to burn the building down I heard that works well and who's smiling faces on that this is John Clayton he's our main speaker he's an historian mm -hmm. he'll be speaking Great. about the city since it's sealed was inaugurated in Concord back in 1846 to 9 Wait. to 2018 Okay. 1846. Why would it? Was it a town before then, or what was it before then? In 1810, it was a town. Until 1846, it became a city. Yeah. Then what was it before 1810? Nothing. Dairyfield. Dairyfield. There was Jamestown in the 1700s, and there was a village, and yeah, it's come a long way. Wow. And interestingly, in 1809, a year prior, is the year that John Stark, longtime resident with his family of Dairyfield, wrote the immortal words, "Live free or die, okay. for death is not the worst of evils." When he sent that well-wishing off to the folks that were celebrating a, a anniversary of the Bennington battle that had happened years prior mm -hmm. so that was an important time period it was the Queen City um, combo jazz band will be playing and they are Why do made they up call it the Queen City that's what they chose to call them because they're proud of our city nicknamed after the Queen yeah have you been to Manchester, some of those shows England. Manchester England is not a Queen oh, no, no but London is I mean Br the Britons are. This is going to take the whole show. So. Manchester was a main manufacturing city, and yes. our yes, it was. city became comparable <laughs> to Manchester. To so Manchester, they England. That's correct. No kidding. That's so wow. the, the okay. Queen City Combo Jazz Band will be our main entertainment, although we have others. But they are all high school students who do this on their own, separate from their class. There are five members from 
two or three different high schools. So if they're sister cities with Manchester, England, England, do they rec recognize the Queen? No. We don't. <laughs> Manchester, England does. Right. See, we but don't if have sisters. Well, we're so, so do we have to root for Manchester United? You know the football team. We're, we're, we're I would think. Right? Is that rugby? We're not blood sisters. We're just <laughs> sisters. <laughs> well, isn't that the same thing? No, it's not. I don't know. I've been to some fabulous shows around here, and I think that's why they call it the Queen City today. Really? Uh, you should see some of those queens. No, no, please. <laughs> don't you make never me. know. I never. I don't. You're gonna upset Gary. Don't knock it till you tried it. I've heard that. <laughs> anyway, that w that was your 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 two seconds of fame. Glenn. Well, it's not fame. It's All right. it's it's for the city. Let the good folks at home know once more uh, the time, date, and and place. Yeah. It's. Um, going to be on Friday from 6.30 to 10 p.m. It's the, first 20, it's the first time since 1996 that we celebrate our city, and some of us in this city think that it's time to do some good for the city, and all we hear is about drugs and crime and p things like that, poverty. How about celebrating our city? We believe that a city that doesn't celebrate itself is not a happy city. Right. There you go. So it's been all 20 right, years, thanks, a long time coming. 22 years. Yeah. Harriet! Harriet! You came all the way from back east to talk with us. All of 20 miles. See? <laughs> back east. It's back it's east. a long way, way back. back east. <laughs> way back. Did you fly here? <laughs> I, came, I came 30 miles. Really? But, but, oh, yeah. But you but, went you but just came I wasn't north. back east. No. So. She was from back east. Yes, she was. Anyway. So we're excited to hear about uh, so updates. What, which, yeah, what's the, what, updates. what happened this year that was, was there any good, because I know a lot of, Good things started out this year, and then they kind of fizzled out and died and were decapitated. Well, after years of trying to get a citizen's right to know commission so that citizens didn't have to go to court. Okay, wait, let's back up. Because right to know is, is for some viewers, it doesn't probably mean anything. So basically, as a citizen of the city of New Manchester, <coughs> your taxes pay for everything they do at City Hall, mm -hmm. okay? And outside. And outside. So mm -hmm. when you, or the, or the schools or whatever, so your taxpayer money paid for all that paperwork, all those records. So except for rare exceptions, you should have easy access to that information if you want to, because the government that is... Um, kept an eye on is the one that governs best. And that is what our founders told us we right. must do. So so right to know is your right to have access to that information. Right. RSA 91A says that you have a right to any records or documents. So for instance, if you saw a street being paved and you wanted to know what it cost, you could go to Public Works and say, I want to see that. And how did it come about that you chose that company? See the bid process, however they did it. All of that is your right to know. Right. So over the years, I've taken several right to know cases and won quite a few. And I realized the average citizen who doesn't understand that the legislature have left it to the citizen to enforce their laws. Right, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. They left you and I to enforce right to know and school boards and selectmen, aldermen do things. We're the ones that have to take them to court. The first time I did it was because the school board went into non-public session over something I had. See, okay, so now let's back up. The, so when the school board is dealing with like personnel issues, like they're gonna fire yeah. somebody because they they got they got caught with a goat in the in the uh, locker room. And that happens all the time. I don't know if you knew that. So <laughs> if that, they're about to fire somebody that's that a, was me. No, oh jeez, I didn't know. That um, if they're about to fire somebody, they can go in, in what's it called again? Non-public session to discuss that. Right. So that you don't, if like for instance, if there there's just allegations of something happening, it doesn't get out and ruin somebody's career. 
because of a personnel issue. But there's so an there, exception well, I know, Gary. but I'm just saying that there are reasons and justifications for non-public session, but it's uh, uh, in, in this case it's probably abused. They use that it's as a way very to much abuse, avoid but public scrutiny. For every citizen, the RSA 91A3 Roman numeral 4 right. mm -hmm. C says for personnel matters they may go into non-public. Right. Unless the person they're going in about says, no, I want it in public. Oh. They must ask. And that came about because of the police officer named Johnson in Northwood, New Hampshire, who was working at night, and they went in to fire him. And he went to court and said, but I couldn't defend myself because I couldn't be there. Right. So the court made some law in that they said, the person has the right to decide if it's going to be non-public, not the board. Right. Which is very important. It's very cool, too, because that means that that officer, if he knows he's being railroaded. Right. And, and now, if he knows he's guilty, he might want to stay in non-public right. so his, yep. re his career isn't eliminated. But. but three times out of four... They vote to go into non-public session, and they never tell the person they're going in with or about unless you want to stay in public. They never add that phrase. So, remember RSA 91A 3 Roman numeral 4 C. Right. And if you read that, you'll see it. Anyways, uh, this reason I came in particularly was in the previous session of the legislature, a bill was passed which allowed for a study commission to study having a ombudsman to hear right to know cases where a citizen, instead of having to take a petition into the court, <coughs> could simply write a letter to the ombudsman saying, my town did this and I want to talk with you and have a hearing and the the town or school district or whatever board mm -hmm. could appear there they don't have to have a lawyer and the ombudsman would decide based on rsa 91a if the town school whatever had violated the law and rule against them this commission studied the law every week from September 6th till November 1st. We were required to write a report, which we did, hand it to the governor, speaker, the uh, chairman of the house, and the um, president of the Senate, and mm -hmm. a couple of others, to read. It would be $48,000 to hire the ombudsman. The Secretary of State graciously told us that he had office space in what is called the State House Annex. Yes. That he would be willing to give them an office space and phone desk, blah, blah, blah. So we basically handled the cost of having an ombudsman for $48,000 in the beginning. A state representative from the Finance Committee, Lynn Ober, never bothered to read the report stood on the floor and said to the legislators, how many were there, say 370, that it was costly for 14 cases a year, that it would, um, they only had 14 cases a year now, so that was a very costly way to solve it, and on and on. And Which actually is not accurate, because A, the 14 cases, so anyway, so uh, to to sum up basically what we did, because I was on that board, the commission rather, and but I was sick for most of it. I was like barely staying awake. Um, but you guys did a great job. I will take zero credit because I contributed zero. But you guys did a great job. A lot of really good people on it. And basically what they tried to do was, like you said, have an ombudsman and or a referee so you would just go to the referee and say, hey, ref, they won't let me give me the information. He looks at what the information they want, calls up the town and says, hey, what's going on? So they have a very cheap way to deal with these, these right-to-know requests instead of somebody having to, 
you know, like if 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 it happened to a regular citizen, they go to the town and says, "I want to know how uh, who built this road and how much it costs and who how the bidding went," and they said, "No, tough." He just says, "Oh, so if he wants, if that person wants to do something." How do I take this to court? I don't know how to take this to court. So what, what I'm getting mm -hmm. at is there is, for the 14 people that they were talking about, and I don't think that might just be state, it might not even be local, but let's say there were just 14 statewide last year, there's probably like 60 others that didn't even bother because the the cost of going to court and the and hiring a lawyer if they thought they needed a lawyer and all that stuff would have been um, so prohibitive, they well, just let it slide. Let me give you the example. The town of Sandwich, zoning board, planning board, selectmen, a bunch of them were doing emails and talking about a case behind the scenes. The lawyer who owned property on Squam Lake did not want the garage to be built right next to his property, whatever reason. He proved they had discussed his case outside of a posted public meeting. It must be posted if a quorum is discussing business. Mm -hmm. They can't even do business by email. A quorum cannot do it. And that's in Miller versus Fremont. The court awarded originally four hundred thousand dollars in legal cost to this lawyer he hired mclean law firm they're not cheap right so the town had to pay that law firm now the newspaper said four hundred thousand i've heard since that it was three hundred and two hundred but i'm going with what the newspaper said my point is the last part of RSA 91A 9 says, and the person can recoup costs, except if you do as I do and go pro se. If you go pro se, the only cost you Tell get. Tell what pro se means. Pro se means to represent yourself. Right. So the only cost I can recoup, I can't get my time, I don't get copying costs. But the judge says, how much did it cost you? Well, it cost me $260 to enter it in court. It cost me $68 to have the sheriff deliver it to my town. And then... And none of your time's covered. None of your time's covered if it's pro se. Right. But I happen to have a paralegal. The average citizen wouldn't even begin to know that you got to do a petition to go into the court. Then you got to let the court clerk draw up a writ. Then you've got to go to the court and pick up the writ and take it to the sheriff with five copies of the petition so he can deliver to the people. It's a very complicated process. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be scheduled within 30 days to come to court and argue the case. Sure. Unless somebody asks for a postponement. And usually they will. Anyways, the point being that SB 555, which would have served the citizens, which is what we supposedly have a legislature for, to serve the citizens. It's called a citizen's legislature. Indeed. Instead, killed a bill. Reasons? Did they give any? The only reason was Lynn Ober said it would be a very costly way to solve 14, 14 cases. But as Gary said, we couldn't even get an accurate count on the 14. And many of those are newspapers because their reporters go to get some kind of information and they take the right to know cases. The second point is out of a, what, $14 million budget? Right. They couldn't spend $48,000 for a citizen's way of well, saving. Just that one case you cited, because we're supposed to be there to, like you say, a citizen's legislature to make acquiring, in this case, information as simple and easy as possible. And when it's not done, 
it, it might have cost overall the taxpayers $48,000, but just the one case you cited cost taxpayers $300,000. So that would have paid his salary for six years. There you go. If that would have been resolved out of court by an odd budsman, just that one case. And you're averting an awful lot of burdensome litigation that could otherwise be avoided. Yeah. I mean, is the ombudsman's role that of an impartial, like yeah. Gary said, basically like umpire, referee? Referee, judge. umpire, yeah. Okay, so he's, he's not there to engage in arbitration necessarily. No. Uh, mm -hmm. Nor is he biased or serve, not, not biased, but serving either party. Correct. He's he is to look at the law and say and they had a right to it. Got it. Or she. It might sure. have been a she. Sure. The point of this all is it'll come back next year. I guarantee you I've got legislators who will introduce it. It went through the Senate. It passed the Senate. It had like eight, ten senators supporting, I mean, sponsoring it. Plus Gary. <laughs> and then it came into the House Judiciary, came out high recommendations ought to pass. Yeah, I don't th I think we get, was it unanimous or pretty close? Yes. It was very close. And then the, uh, the, um, the dirty, rotten dealings in the Finance Committee killed it. It sounds like it was misrepresented to the General Assembly when. It was. It was definitely misrepresented. And believe me, I have been a terror to Lynn Ober. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I do not like people who don't tell the truth, but worse was 15 of us spent our weeks studying, going through, answering questions. Anybody could come and look at it. The Attorney and General's office, there's somebody from the Attorney General's office there spending, spending her days there. and. Um, County Municipal New Hampshire there. Municipal, County and Municipal County, I mean, legislator. Um, All volunteer time Yes. as well. Yeah, uh, senators, myself, the president of Right to Know New Hampshire, David Sad, who did a lot of the... He did a really great job. Great writing. And the, other one, the other one we got a, 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 a hat tip to is uh, Senator Bob Guy. He was the... Uh, he was, chairman. he was a chairman. He did a great job. He's a, he's a good he's he not a, he's only a did a great job, he wrote the bill Wow! with uh, three of the members. ACLU supported the bill. ACLU was a member of the committee. Um, well, under 50000 is a reasonable annual wage for somebody that's helping to alleviate the burden on the judicial system, And at one. the point, it would be part-time, until uh, yeah. such time as you got the word out there you had this person yeah she also misrepresented the the, the there was there was the, the ombudsman and or the referee and the commission and the commission would be all volunteer and, and oh, they I should say the commission was one person from every county so that the North Country would not feel slighted every county would have a representative sounds like good work yeah and it was uh, and they misrepresented that and says, well, they don't even have the rules for this. Well, that's because when they got together, they would start writing their own rules as to how they're going to organize their meetings and things like that, who's going to be the president, and all that stuff. So it was, it was pretty standard operating procedure. You never write in the legislation the committee's rules. You leave it to the committee to come up with how they're going to run themselves and then object when they have their public hearing to them. Right. So she not only misrepresented them, she said we had no money for if they had to have airfare. Well, I never knew of anybody airfare? that lived in any. I didn't remember that one. Yeah. Boy. I never knew of anybody that lived in any 10 counties in New Hampshire flying to a meeting. Right. I don't Except know about for Gary. You. Yeah, well, right. yeah. <laughs> Well, the way I drive. At this juncture, forgive me, folks at home and distinguished guests and my, and my uh, co-host. I have to secede from this conversation at the secede. moment. Yes, I am. I am. I am a secessionist. <laughs> um, I've got a okay. conference call that Hurry I can't back. miss. Get out of my house. I hope to get back as soon as possible. So Leave us. you carry on, folks at home. This is what a real citizen warrior looks like. Just so you know. Thank you. Yeah. The the fact of the matter is citizens need this bill yeah and as Gary said we don't know how many citizens out there ask for information 
and shrug their shoulders and walk away and say, government, they're all crooked. Right, yep. Oh, and that's absolutely. what I hear. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I can't imagine there's, I don't know what percentage of the population that would be, would, I mean, most people would get nervous just asking for the information because they're going to a government which they're a little bit, you know, worried, worried about because they don't know what kind of ramifications might mm -hmm. be if they actually started digging into things. So they're nervous about that. Then they tr ask, you know, can I have this information? And they said, told, told to pound sand. And it's like, wow, if I push this further, what's going to happen? And it shouldn't be just, that way. It, shouldn't, it it's obviously just, shouldn't be that way. It's just not just a citizen like me who happens to be very interested in how my government works, but it's contractors who want a job working for a town or whatever have a right to see how the town operates in the area they would look for a job roof highways or if, or if a contractor didn't get a bid right it would be reasonable for that contractor to go to the town and say okay well not necessarily for vindictive purposes for but for informational purposes how can i what should i do in the future who outbid me and what what you know stuff like that so doing research as to why they didn't get the bid is absolutely reasonable right and you know they could very well look at the bids and say hey this guy that got the bid didn't give you the same stuff I did didn't right. give you the same product didn't give you the same materials right right so, um, anyways I want to get off that one and we'll tell you please tell your legislators you want that bill to pass next year right whoever gets elected then I'd like to come to um, a bill that affected SB2 towns for those of you who don't know uh, in 1992 Jim Rubens put in a bill that was SB2 it's actually RSA 40 colon 13 for towns who can vote their town and school budget on a ballot they, right they don't yeah, yeah. have sb2 towns went they used to have uh, when i moved into where we had a town meeting and there would be horse trading and yelling and screaming for all day long into the night and so what happened is they went to an s people didn't want to devote that much of their you know time to that so what they did is they went to an sb2 town we did and what that means is there is a <coughs> proposed budget, a default budget, and all the warrants are laid out and petitions, petitioned warrants are laid out on a ballot and there um, it goes to a deliberative session where it's not where those can be amended to some degree and discussed and then and then once that's over that goes to the ballot it goes to a, the vote and uh, people can come in any time of the day during voting and vote for selectmen and vote for the budget or vote for the school budget and zoning and zoning and stuff like that so that's what SB2 means and uh, only one town that I know of that went to SB2 went back to a regular town or school meeting the situation for most people, as Gary said, it was an all-day argument, and <laughs> you tended to have special interests there, let's say that. Right. And so they would stick around till the end, but other people would get tired. The elderly would say, I've got to go home, take my medicine, whatever. Right. And they'd end up winning in the end, or they would even make a motion to overturn the vote that had been taken earlier that people thought was settled. So in Vermont, they have what they call Australian ballot, and one of our people brought that idea to Granite State taxpayers, and we worked from 1988 with a city legislator, Jackie Domain, who put the bill in and finally in 92 Jim Rubens put it in and we got it passed and it works fairly well the people like being able to vote that budget on the ballot right they know what they're spending yeah 
there's idiosyncrasies. And one of them is that you still can petition a warrant article. I don't know. Can the city people petition to city aldermen? That would be a question they, for certain. They land. can. It used to be that the petitions need to be certified by the city clerk as a group. This year, they decided that every signature needs to be sealed and needs to be notarized. And that is very, what? that is so ridiculous. So we're trying to change that. That goes against the, I think it's Article 30 of the New Hampshire Constitution that says the citizen has the right of petitioning their government. doesn't say their signature has to be notarized. Yeah, so if you have 19,000 people on a petition and they all have to have it certified, it's never going to happen. That's, that's their intention. Let's it's a good it. way to get it. Who's, who, who's initiating that? Well, it was the Board of Mayor and Alderman. Wow. It tells, it tells me there's some elected officials that need to learn who's their boss. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Ben Franklin says when he came out of the constitutional meeting where they decided what would be in the Constitution, and a lady hollered, what form of government have you wrought, sir? And he said, a republic, if you can keep it. Meaning... In a democracy, majority rules. In our country, you can't overrule a constitutional right of any one person with a majority vote. Correct. And that's been proven by the courts when you say, how did they do that? They're only one person. But that's what you do. You live in a republic. Anyways, I got... Um, House Bill 506 put in, and that was because I would put a petitioned article in that 30, 40 people would sign, and then three or four would change it to mean something opposite of what I had put it in for. Yeah, we did that when we had um, uh, the petitioned Warren article to take David Souter's house. It went to the deliberative session, and they amended it to say that, that the town will not take David Souter's house, which nullified the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the, and the uh, people that were sympathetic to David Souter outnumbered the people that wanted to uh, um, basically make a huge st statement, national statement, actually. And, uh, but they outnumbered us, so we lost. Well, But that's not the way it's supposed to do, because that means there's a small group of people who are denying us the right to petition. There you go. That's correct. So, um, Which is what, what you're talking about. They have now denied the, the people of Manchester the right to petition by making it so onerous. A constitutional it's, right. Even though they said that's not what they're doing, but that's exactly what they're that's doing. That's exactly what they're doing. That, that's, what was the poll tax? What was that what, what, in down south? The, the poll tax, yeah. We had it up here, too, at one point. We did? Yeah, years yeah. ago. But that was to, to discourage people from yes. voting. It's yes. the same thing. Well, yes. it was to keep people. If you didn't pay the $12, you couldn't vote. Right. Mm -hmm. And the ACLU took that to court, and the court ruled that's making people pay to vo be able to vote. Yeah. So anyway. So, so wait, 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 wait. Correct. So unless they have a um, notary for free. You're paying for it. They have to pay for it, right? It's at least five dollars. So it's at least five dollars. Yeah. So if that's true, your mate, your it's the same argument same against argument. the poll tax is against what they're doing. But what she's saying to is true that a uh, lots of people want to know what's going on, but they're not willing to go to court, and so they'll step aside. And that's what sometimes the government is waiting for. Let's discourage them, make it very difficult, so that they will not find out. Or they can't afford it. Let's face it, um, we know in society that most people only have two weeks of wages ahead in their home. Anyways, 506, which passed, the, uh, but a city senator named James Gray put an amendment on it and when you have an amendment there, and then in the House, the amendment was that you couldn't change the intent of the petitioned article. Right. 
They then call for a committee of conference to see if the two houses can agree. Mr. Gray wasn't willing to give up his position. House wanted that intent in there because that was what was originally put That's in. That's the only reason to have it. Right. Mm -hmm. That was what was originally put in by Kathy Hosell and Senator Barnes in the 2011 bills that they introduced and passed. But the court misinterpreted it in my court case last year. And so I said, well, I'll get the law changed rather than pay another $270 to the Senate to bring it back in. Well, I, uh, I was so angry that a city senator changed it. But he not only did that, he left out RSA 40 colon 13 towns and left in regular towns and regular school districts. So now you can't change a petitioned article in a school district in a regular town or in the town, but in an SB2 town, about 62-3 in the state, you can change the intent of a petitioned article. That went through the, it passed? That passed. Why do you think I was sending you all emails saying, do this, do this? On the floor, what I was trying to get done was to have the House move to set aside their rules, which says you can't change a committee of conference report, and add the law for SB2 towns. All yeah. they had to do was add one sentence. Right, but what the, probably the best thing to do at that point would have been to table it and try it again next year because yeah I'll try it again next year but anyways that was another one that was a citizen friendly now, bill. What, what's the senator that uh, scuttled it Jim Gray from Rochester why why did you talk to him find out why it just it inadvertently got left out yeah BS did he say why, though? Did he actually have a real reason why? No, the only reason he said he amended was to fix it so that if grammar was put in, it didn't change intent. But he, in redrafting, he left out that section that said, you know, it said regular 38 towns come under RSA 38, towns and cities, um, schools come under RSA 197, and... SB2 towns under RSA 40 colon 13 and by leaving out the 40 colon 13 sentence it only applies to the others. I maintain that's an unconstitutional move because now you've set certain towns up to be ruled differently. Yeah that's kind of a tough one because they're already ruled differently because they're SB2 towns. Mm. No we still do our vote right but it's this is just now intent can be changed in a petition article there but it can't be in the other places right right why so that was one that was a citizen friendly bill that I got a legislator legislature to put in it's, there's it's, one other one I'm trying to think what it was Gary um, somehow or another the New Hampshire Municipal Association's lobbyist carries way too much power in the legislature. That's a true fact. The law that says all bills that must have a fiscal note, Gary will explain that if you've got money to be spent in that bill and it's going to cost something, it must have a fiscal note from the budget comptroller. Yeah, like in other words, if you have a, like this, the bill we had for the uh, uh, Citizens Commission and the Ombudsman, if it didn't have the Ombudsman and only had the Commission, or maybe even then, but let's just for argument's sake, if it didn't cost any money, it would have never gone to finance. That might be a way to skin the cat. Keep it out of finance and add that later. Anyway, um, but because it had a fiscal note, which means a financial a financial note because it was going to cost the taxpayers money it has to go to finance and finance committee 
have killed some really good bills that pertain to citizens rather than um, passing them while wasting money in other places in the state. And uh, boy, I'll tell you. Well, Bob Guida had a really great bill. And what it was was a bill that, like, you know, a lot of towns, you, you, you're, you live in, like, I live in where, and I want to build a garage in the center of town, whatever it is, or build whatever it is. So I check the zoning. The zoning's all good. I get all the permits, permits or, you know, or whatever, and then they start stonewalling because they basically don't want me to build instead of saying, you know, as long as you're complying with all the things, but a lot of towns will just stonewall and say, well, you got to do this. Well, we don't like the site plan, so you got to do this. And it's all basically using the power of government to crush uh, somebody who wants to do something. The little guy. The little guy. Or the big guy. It can be a big <laughs> guy. Too. It could be Walmart. So um, what that does has the effect of doing is, A, it's um, using the power of government against the people and against the laws that the people have agreed to. Because if, if the people have agreed that <coughs> this area is zoned a certain way and that this type of business can go into that area and you don't let it in just because you don't want it, that's not your, as a public official, that's not one of your options. Unless they're doing something that's contrary to the law. So, uh, uh, so it basically keeps a lot of businesses that might want to come into different towns or different places or from out of state, okay? So you've got a company that comes from out of state and they're willing to plunk down $70 million to start a new business and the first thing they look at is, well, where can we build? And then they, they check with lawyers in, in different towns and stuff or different areas. They say, well, it could take you three years to get it through this town, four years for this one, five years for this one. Then they go to Massachusetts and says, how much would it cost me to get this up and running here? We'll have you go on in, in two months. So where, where if, uh, if somebody's truly a capitalist and wants to make money, where are they going to build? So the citizens of New Hampshire are getting hosed by these basically little, um, almost like uh, people with bigger egos than, than anything else, and they're, who are abusing their positions and not allowing things to be built. So Bob Guida had a bill that said that um, if you have a project and it's being unreasonably delayed for no reason, and you've, you've done all the, the correct things. You could actually take it to court. Not court. He had a special thing. I forget what it was. I forget what Bill. Eric might remember. Bob Which Guida's one? bill about. So so the. About. He had a, a bill that would allow somebody to um, supersede the town. As long as they've done all the right things, the company Hearings, can come in and build is anyway. Is it the building code board for the state? Kind of. An oversight board that says, no, you can't block him from building that. That's ridiculous. If you're not, if you don't want people building there, then zone, you know, number residential, one, not Number industrial. one, and first of all, the New Hampshire Municipal and the New Hampshire School Boards, I sat in a hearing. We had no testimony against SB 555. Right. Senate or judiciary. So SB 555 was which one, young lady? the one that would have an ombudsman. Okay. Mm -hmm. The New Hampshire Municipal agreed with us. But Senator Kahn on 506 says, now Concord Senator, I'd like to ask the School Boards Association in New Hampshire Municipal how they feel about it. Wait a minute. We pay their dues. The New Hampshire Municipal has a budget this year of $1.78 million. They pay their lobbyists with our money. With our tax money. Yeah, they use I our tax I believe Manchester pays about $36,000 in dues to the New Hampshire So they municipal. take taxpayer money, pay it to the Municipal Association, and the Municipal Association oftentimes does whatever they can to protect the state or the government 
as opposed to protecting the, pe the citizens. That's right. They oftentimes work against the citizens they who are paying the bill. Absolutely. Time. What you've got to remember is the New Hampshire Municipal and the New Hampshire School Boards do what the elected officials want them to do because they're the ones that are going to put their dues in the budget. But here's where it gets bad. Well, their bad executive boards are made up of employees. Not the elected officials, but the employees who say, well, we don't want them to be able to do that. We don't want to have to work harder because of that. And I'm going to give you an example of one that costs the taxpayers big time. I was at the health trust meeting in Concord. What's a health trust? That is the insurance that most cities and towns buy for their employees. Okay. It, Blue Cross Blue Shield, but they sell it, they broker it. Yeah. The health trust board, made up of mostly employees of the town, had about 15 on the board. Yeah. And Blue Cross Blue Shield came to them and said, we can reduce the cost to the towns and cities if we raise the deductible to $300 on handicap. A person that works for the town or school will pay the first 300 and then we take over paying the bill. This girl an office employee in Hillsborough, New Hampshire says, I don't want that, I'd have to pay that 300. And you know the board went along with her? Hmm. So the rates went up for all of us buying the insurance because she had a child that she didn't want to pay the $300 deductible on. So, so help me God true, I've got witnesses. So basically what was best for the taxpayers Absolutely. It had nothing to do with the decision. Absolutely. And that's because when you go, are you going to look out for the taxpayers or as an employee, are you going to think, well, this means this to me? Self-interest always wins out. Mm. Usually does. Yeah. So consequently, I believe the New isn't Hampshire... That, wait, isn't, that, does, isn't that a violation of her... Um, Fiduciary duty. Yes. Also, um, what is it when we're a state legislator? We have to file a form to make sure we're not conflict, conflict of, of interest. interest. Conflict of interest, yeah. She well, I would that's say that's it was, but not one person on that executive board objected. Gary, there was enough employees there all in representing towns that should have spoken up. Mm -hmm. They're employees. It yeah. says it all. They're all in conflict. So. You're an employee and you don't want something, so I'll vote with you this time. And you're an employee and you don't want something, so I'll vote with you this time, even though it's going to cost the taxpayers. That's what it comes down to. So they lobby amongst themselves. So we end up paying the bill. That's what's killing us. Our tax bill keeps going up. You know, I don't know what it is in Manchester, but the insurance for a family employee of the town is over $20,000. So if they get $36,000 as secretary to the uh, finance officer, there's another 20000 Now for every dollar a town employee, city employee uh, earn, we're paying another 14.8 cents to the retirement for them. Every dollar is not a dollar in their paycheck, it's a dollar and 14 cents. Now, so, if it's police... Wait, wait, we're gonna call? Mm -hmm. If it's police, it's like 32 cents. If it's firemen, it's like 35 cents for yeah, every no dollar. Oh. Thank you, Paul. So... Why is it more for cops and firemen? Because they're not in Social Security. Oh, that's right, they're not. I did not know that. Okay. Who created that? Was it the state years ago? Yeah. Um, actually, many, many years ago. It's. Hey, Carrie, we only got five minutes. Is there some place online people can go to start getting active? I mean, or groups that they can get, they can 
look into to get active. I know uh, Coalition New Hampshire Taxpayers is, is really great. Yeah. Granite State Taxpayers. Grant, Granite Bedford, State. Yeah. Okay. Are going to have a meeting June 6th. Very special CACR coming up. Constitutional Amendment and Resolution. Yes. Is uh, 15. Yep. Which um, gives the citizen the right to bring suit as a taxpayer. Which is ridiculous that we actually have to do that, by the right. way. It was taken away from us by a decision by Judge Dalianus last year. So, um, yeah, so right we had been able to do it until her he decision, and now we've got to put a constitutional amendment to Article 8 that says the citizen can now sue as a taxpayer. She said a taxpayer is not enough personal interest to be able to sue a town or city. Which is insane. How can an individual judge's decision, which creates a precedent, I understand that. Because she's a Supreme legally, Court. Supreme Court, can it, okay, so she can interpret the state constitution as she sees fit. Yep. And the entire court went along with her or her individual judge? Well, the majority of the judges went along sorry, sorry. with her. Anyways, the, po the point yeah. is, please tell and bring <laughs> Chuck Douglas in to speak even about sure. CACR 15 because he's promoting that all over the state. Um, oh, he's actually in favor of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. he wrote it. And well, that, good that's good because he was also in favor of CACR 22, and I wanted to shoot him. Mm -hmm. I'm caught and picking believable. Because he's a smart guy. He had to know the ramifications of that one. We use figures of speech, by the way, folks at home. Here oh, no. A lot. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> well. I got your back, Gary. Thanks, all, I, all I can say, I say is what? I'm here because <laughs> there were so many bills this year that I was so upset about because all they were were for you and I as a citizen to be able to hold our government accountable. Transparency. Yeah. By the way, I should promote Right to Know New Hampshire. If you go to um, Right to Know New Hampshire's blog, we have Right to Know cases, case law, so you know what the courts have made them do. And they're a great group. They were very, very helpful on a lot of this stuff. Yep. So that's and and I, I tell you, as sitting on the judiciary, when Right to Know New Hampshire comes in, I, I carefully listen. So that's a great educational resource for anybody. That Absolutely, wants to get. and we will assist a person in writing their petition for the court. Right to so, Know New Hampshire so, dot org. Yep. So dot we got org. the places okay. you can go for information are Right to Know New Hampshire, mm -hmm. uh, Granite State Taxpayers out of Bedford, uh, Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. I believe they're out of Concord. Yes. And they're having their teddy bear picnic, I think, in a week or two, aren't they? Usually around the 8th of July. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. right around July, beginning of July. Their and that's, big that's fundraiser fun. of the that's year. That's their big fundraiser. I, the last couple of years it was up in Hillsborough, but it's a, mm. it's a, a, they're great people. No, last year it was at the Sweeney Post. Ooh, excuse Very me. Very easy to get to. Oh yeah, that was. Oh yeah, right. You're right. You're right. I'm. I'm totally full of baloney again. Minute to go. We got a minute to go. What else? Come on, Harriet. <laughs> Anyways. Oh wait, no. We've got a minute to go. Quick, quick. Get two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to make sure you know who you're voting for this September in the primary, mm -hmm. because they're signing up to run for office by June 15th. And if you want to be a citizen legislator who represents the citizens' interests, please sign up. Exactly. Glenn, you got 10 seconds. Quick. But the, time uh, and place. That's it. The city's birthday is this Friday from 6.30 to 10 p.m. It'll be at City Hall Plaza, but because of the rain, we're holding it upstairs. Uh, in the chambers. Come on down. It'll chambers. be 172 years old. The automatic City chambers. Hall, You're Friday evening. Glenn's be there. Glenn's going to be 172 years old. You That's wish. Cool. You'd never know it. <laughs> you wouldn't know it. Harry, thank, thank you, you for Harry, joining us. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys next week. Hey.